Welcome back to another episode of Seed Spark Sessions. As always, we hope this one finds you well, and if you happen to miss last week's show, we talked about the power of branding in the digital space and how important it is for modern marketing. We were joined by Seed Spark's creative director, Taylor Dolinger, to talk more about the subject, and it was a fantastic episode. I highly recommend you give it a listen. But on today's show, we are joined by Seed Spark CEO Chad Jenkins to talk more about the power of building a brand online, but specifically the value of social media, because it can go so much further than many people realize. So without further ado, let's sit down and talk to Chad Jenkins, CEO of SeedSpark. So what are your social media habits like in your busy day-to-day life? Of course, you've got a packed schedule, you have tons of stuff going on, meetings with incredible amounts of people. Where do you trend whenever it comes time to sit down and spend a few minutes online? Okay. Uh, for so, so social media that I have noticed over the years, it's become very defined of the times that I leverage social media. And, and you do make a good point. I don't think I'm like anyone else. Everyone's busy, right? Everyone has so much to do and not enough time to do it. So finding time to make sure that you're touching those platforms for value and not just to waste time. It's, it's, uh, I think most people have probably settled in, but I've noticed myself, I definitely have a routine. So a couple platforms that I use, I do enjoy and find Twitter itself to be valuable. Um, I oftentimes refer to Twitter as your personal newspaper. So being able to customize exactly who you're following with intentionality, that is what I think yields the value that I find out of Twitter. As far as the timing that I utilize it, uh, first thing in the morning, a lot of times I'm able to blow through just hundreds of headlines and I like to consume information that way in short, but bountiful stints. See if there's something that I enjoy or it's something that I want more information on and I'll save it and come back. And a lot of times I start there so that I'm not just creating this reading list that I actually never get to. But with Twitter, I, as I mentioned, I'm able to find headlines that mean something to me because I'm following somebody intentionally that puts out good, authentic content that I can utilize to share with whomever ends up following me or is in my immediate circle. So it, it may not be something for any business that I own, but it may be someone that I'm engaged with or that I care about. I may be following someone who's a thought leader in that space and I'm able to curate that information and bring value not only to myself, but to others. So that's the way that I use Twitter. The other platforms, LinkedIn is I do use as well. And I find a decent amount of value out of LinkedIn uh, normally known as the professional platform that's, I can understand that even to today's time in one vein, the information that they have that you can utilize is of course, bountiful better than any platform that I've found for specifically trying to get to people in a certain title or demographic or geography. One benefit that LinkedIn provides me now that I'm not quite as young as I used to be, I've been fortunate to create a lot of professional relationships over the years and many folks who are in larger organizations like big corporate or, and also in enterprise, they get moved around the world. So I've got folks that I originally worked with in developing the first Blackberry store of the world. They're all over the world now. Of course, RIM is not exactly what research in motion, which is RIM or Blackberry as most people know them. It's not exactly what it used to be. So those folks kind of scattered and they're very highly qualified very professional people that got picked up. I would never be able to retain those relationships the way that I have if it were not for LinkedIn. And that goes the same for in the uh, production home building industry. I got lots of relationships and the guys carried very high profile positions and they got picked up by a national builder that's over in California or one in Canada. So being able to leverage LinkedIn and keep a bead on sort of what they're doing in their professional life and keep contact with them provides me a lot of value. Those are good, nice relationships that otherwise would have likely gone by the wayside or you may not talk to them for 20 years. I don't like to do that. I hold my relationships pretty tight. Yeah, it's a fantastic way to stay up to date with everybody that you come into contact with or that you have current contact with. Yes. It's a very useful platform. Yeah. So from your perspective as a business owner, Mm -hmm. like you said, you have a unique perspective Mm -hmm. on everything, but specifically in the world of social media, what content do you come across that you think provides the most value Mm -hmm. for people in general or yourself? I would tell you, and you're welcome to laugh. uh, I'm quite curious. Uh, One of our core values, of course, the most leading one for me, or that speaks to me specifically is pursue why. 
So with the level of curiosity that I have, <laughs> there's one thing that I follow on LinkedIn and I, I think the name is interesting engineering. So it has all kinds of things that either people have created that solve real world problems, but they haven't hit mainstream yet. So just being able to scroll through and, and when I'm tracking, of course, other folks that are around the world that I, I just don't talk to on a daily basis, I'll run across that in the feed and it provides me a lot of value, not so much in the context that the product was created for or the business problem that it's solving, but how could you take that level of engineering and use it for something that's completely not designed for and provide value in another way? So I find that quite interesting. So when it comes to another company's social media account, how does that reflect onto the business and the corporation itself? So if when social media is done properly, I feel like it gives a really good glimpse to the inside workings of an organization. Some of that, and first, kind of first and foremost, is the professional nature in which it's done. And I think that even about branding, you're able to identify or interpret how serious they are, not about the service or product that they deliver, but you can interpret that as well by what they're putting out there. So you could, most people, of course, from a Facebook standpoint, know that it gives a glimpse inside the culture. And that, that is true. And it, it's a good vehicle, I believe, for utilizing when you're leveraging it for your recruiting efforts to be able to give a glimpse behind the curtain. So Facebook specifically. But what I was talking about earlier, the nature in which they utilize real talented folks to be able to create the best positioning and polishing of their brand on those mediums. I mean, heck, these accounts are free. There is a true cost to social media though. But I would say for any business owner, take it serious because what you're putting out there is a reflection of your brand beyond just leveraging it for your recruiting efforts, specifically to Facebook, the professional efforts, of course, on LinkedIn, and then just really good content that is providing value to others through your Twitter platform. Like take it serious in essence versus the alternative. And we see so many organizations that have a presence, but they're even their logo will not be correctly sized across the platforms. Like, so that that's not the right way. I wouldn't suggest just, I would actually, I'd suggest not to be on the platforms if you're going to take an approach like that. So if you're going to do it, do it serious, break up the platforms and understand what the platforms themselves were made for. And more specifically, what the audiences that are utilizing the platforms are looking for only it. Then beyond that, the content that you put out, uh, I would strongly suggest it's, it is a sales tool from a brand awareness standpoint, utilize it for that and try your best to provide content of sometimes your secret sauce that can provide others value. So bite-sized chunks that they can understand that solve real business problems. And maybe you're an absolute expert in that you would typically hold that stuff behind the veil or wait till you're under retainer or, or heavily engaged. I, I wouldn't suggest to do that. Put the good stuff out there and show them truly who you are on whichever of those platforms. And the only thing that's different, of course, is the way in which you use the specific platforms based upon the demographics that typically use them. If you go a little bit deeper than that, leverage the voice of your team, right? So if, if you've got a great group of folks and, and I assume most people that listen do engage those who are inside the organization, because they, a lot of times they are your true voice in front of a client in a normal engagement. Why would you not want to leverage that as well on a, on a platform where they're even cast a broader net? It makes it more authentic. So I'd, I'd strongly suggest to make the content that you put out there as authentic as you can in looking at different social handles or profiles, you can tell the ones pretty quickly that are just regurgitating the flavor of the day. And sure you take a platform like Twitter that you, you certainly have to put more content out there because of the nature of the way the feed is, but just don't be a syndication shop is what my suggestion would be. If you really want the people and the demographics that are on those platforms to connect with your brand, let them know exactly who you are. I think another thing that goes into that is an example of this podcast where I am going to start getting more people from other areas of the company to come in and show what they do. Yes. So to be able to take that insight that somebody in tech might not have, mm -hmm. but that somebody in creative marketing might have or vice versa or in whatever department, it can definitely provide more insight than you might normally be able to give. This is true. Yeah. We all live on, in our own little bubble, even inside an organization and we're delivering it as a sum total. 
but it's likely if you give those particular voices inside your organization the opportunity to be heard, relationships are being formed even in a virtual space so that if they do decide to engage with your brand, they may already know the person that they're talking to. So it can go a long way. And again, not a whole lot of cost involved there. So you mentioned earlier about a professional using any of these social media platforms and especially in somebody or for somebody that's in your shoes Mm -hmm. as a business owner, if a CXO, an executive or a CEO, whatever it might be, hasn't gotten on board with social media and Mm -hmm. crafting a digital presence, is it too late for them to get started? Of course, social media has been around for well over a decade at this point. Should they jump in? I don't see a reason that they should not jump in. I see more of a reason that they should interpret they have to jump in. Um, Most of us, for a long time young, and and if you start gaining some level of success, you identify with the organizational brand. But you are a person, and one day everyone will exit their companies. That's a guarantee, right? You will not be on this earth one day. But so if you know that going in, Go ahead and create your profiles and let people know who you are as a person um, because that could take you through life. And there's no telling how you can keep connected to someone that you may have met three to five years ago that is in a completely different position now, but they are able to access you via social and the opportunities can be quite bountiful. We as humans form our own opinions, right? And and we're by nature, I think, uh, wired to size up or to form an opinion or to form an interpretation of anybody that we meet. So leveraging, not having a platform enables someone just to build your profile in their head upon hearsay. So I would strongly suggest, yes, that you do have a platform and you put out content that's authentic, that is you, but go ahead and create that personal profile and and get out there. So in five to 10 years, where do you see social media in the world of business? What kind of impact do you think it's going to have in the long term? As far as how that carries forward, um, social media, I don't think is going anywhere. If anything, I'll, I believe it'll continue to expand, uh, in the news today. Good gracious. Do we hear a lot about fake news? I, th- I think as we continue on, these platforms will get bigger. I think the white noise will be filtered out. And if you come to it from a point of authenticity, it's just going to provide you more value in the future as it becomes more mature itself in these platforms and the way people use them as well. So is there anything else you would like to add about your feelings, your thoughts on the world of social media and the way it impacts businesses? I would say just get out there and and do take it very serious for sure. Because I don't believe it's going away. And somewhere somebody is focused on it with intentionality to use it for the right way. And you don't want to be left behind. Thanks for taking time to check out this episode of SeedSpark Sessions. If you're new here and you enjoyed what you heard, be sure to subscribe on podcast services, or of course, you can find the show on YouTube as well. Links to those pages and our social media channels will be down below, or you can always hit us up on the official SeedSpark website for more information on the topics we covered or to learn more about the services we offer. But we look forward to seeing you on the next episode.